We're about to hear from a company with exciting disruptive technology, even though we know that companies like this have been hammered of late. Dexcom, DXCM, is a maker of continuous glucose monitoring systems for patients who suffer from type 1 diabetes. Sufferers of this dreaded illness must keep track of their blood sugar. Dexcom has a system that allows people to do that without needing to constantly prick their finger. The company makes a sensor that you can stick right on your skin for seven days, and it transmits your blood sugar info right to a wireless receiver. They have this remote application I cannot wait to see. Now, Dexcom is the kind of company with turbocharged revenue growth. Product revenue up 68% last quarter, but doesn't have earnings because it's investing its cash in growing the business. That's exactly the sort of stock that right now is going out of style on Wall Street. Now, initially, I recommended Dexcom for speculation back in March of 2011. The stock has given you a stupendous 130% gain since then. It's been pummeled of late, falling from 49 to 31, but that's that rotation I keep talking about, out of high growth into value. So let's check in with Terry Gray. He's the CEO of Dexcom, find out more about his company and its prospects. Mr. Gray, welcome to Mayor Money. Thank you, yeah, sir. Thanks for having Have me. Have a seat. Thank okay. you Okay, you say it right in your conference call, and I like it, because you come in and just say, look, uh, you, we are developing an entirely new category seeking to disrupt an entire industry. Our viewers like disruptive technology. Can you show us what you've got going? Sure. Okay, so the first product is called the G4. It is a product that's currently on the market. This is a handheld receiver. It allows patients to wirelessly receive their information. On this, they have not only their constant glucose level, they have trends, they have alarm systems that alert them well in advance of running into either too low or too high glucose. Next product up, it's called the Share System. It's a cradle, it charges, it also has radio chips. It communicates to the cloud. Okay. We then communicate that to an app that I have on an iPhone. Okay. I punch the app. I'm actually following the president of the company who's out in San Diego. And so what he's experiencing right now, this is real-time information. So his current glucose level is 93. You can see the trend. I've got alarm systems on here. Should he go too high or too low, I'll be able to be notified, both with vibration as well as with alerts. So you think about a child. I was going to say, how about a child Perfect. in fifth grade? How about someone in second grade? They don't really know themselves how to monitor. Or even a, a spouse traveling around the world. Right. We can have constant remote monitoring with this app. Uh, okay. So, uh, Terry, tell me where this was. I know you know this category better than anyone because you've been in it for a long time. Where, what would we be doing 10 years ago, five years ago, and two years ago versus Okay. This? So, 10 years ago. You're taking a Lancet device, sticking your finger, putting a drop of blood on a strip and sticking it in a meter, waiting 30 seconds for it to give you a number. It didn't have any alarm systems, no trending, no speed, no direction. Five years ago, pretty much the same thing. Most of the technology was early stage. Two years ago, at least we're, we're moving into the receiver world in which we have that technology. Now, we're taking all of that, this convergence of healthcare, putting it into the cloud, and making things easier for patients to use, more part of what they do every day, taking some right. of the mystery out of diabetes. Uh, FDA on board, insurance companies on board. Yeah, 98% of our current installed base have some form of third-party payer. Uh, FDA, these are all class three medical right. devices. We have to go through extensive rigor of clinical trials mm -hmm. and submit those in formal applications to receive FDA approval. Now, I know that you uh, have been in the business a long time. I also know that you sold, a, you helped sell a company to Medtronics, which is <laughs> your principal competitor. Where, I know that Medtronics always want to welcome on the show. I love that company. But where are you in terms of, do you believe, in terms of your competitive position versus the company you that you sold your company. Sure, well, in terms of accuracy, and that's really what sensors right, right, are measured right. by. So the latest data, which is independent, peer-reviewed, has us 50% more accurate than the latest version of the Medtronic sensor. And come next month at the American Diabetes Association, we're gonna show you yet more data, which indicates that we have moved the bar up even higher when we release that data at the annual scientific session. And I know a lot of us have worked at one time or another in our careers, and some people just have devoted their life because it's a terrible disease to the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, which apparently does favor your work. Well, they do. I mean, the, the proof is in the you know, proverbial pudding in that most of the, the individuals that are part of JDRF use our product. Right. We just received an award this weekend in San Diego by JDRF 
acknowledging not only me, but also our company. So I think it's that's the, the individuals that have to live with it and deal with it, make the choice, and they choose us. Right now, latest T1D Exchange, which is a not-for-profit mm -hmm. uh, information aggregate, has us at 58% share of the U.S. Wow, market. Well, it's become from where you were. Right, and in the pediatric market, 63% wow. share. So okay. that's a big boon for us. Now, I know because of this rotation, there's a problem here for the stock, which is that you're spending all this money to, to win, right. right? And you have stock-based compensation, but you're hiring salespeople because you have superior product. If you wanted to show more profitability, I imagine you could do that, but you want to beat the other guy, and you've got the product that, that everybody should have. So the expenses that you have, which are higher than a lot of the analysts mentioned, you mentioned in your call, have to be a little bit higher right now. So that's just the way it is if you're going to win, right? Look, our long-term mission is to replace finger sticks. Get right. out of that finger-pricking responsibility of patients. You've got to spend money to do that. We issued our stock grants on an annual basis. They hit in March. You know what we were trading at in right. March. So we're going to carry $9 million worth of uh, non-cash equity expense throughout the remainder of the year. We have to overcome that. We said we would be cash flow positive right. for the full year. We were last year. We look to be gap positive in 2015 as we continue to grow. Okay. We have said, Jim, we will grow 35 40% every year. Last year, we grew 57%. Right. Fabulous growth. We've got a great first quarter. and. We look at the rest of the year in, in a very positive fashion. Right. We will grow into whatever we need to. I remind you back when you said 2011, right. what we were trading at. You mentioned even a year no, ago. No, it's so. the greatest home run, one of the great <laughs> home runs our viewers have had. So I think it's important to understand that context. And just to tell you, remember, the pendulum swings back. They will like high growth again. And in the category, Dexcom has the highest. That's Terry Gregg, CEO of Dexcom. Don't move, lightning rounds next.